what is the derivative of this function, the square root of x plus the square root of x plus <laughs> the square root of x again? How can we find the derivative of that expression? Well, we need to use the chain rule because we have functions within other functions. Now, just to review, here's how you could use the chain rule. So let's say you want to find the derivative of a composite function, f of g of x. What you need to do first is find the derivative of the function on the outside, which will be f prime, while keeping the inside the same, times the derivative of the inside function. And so that's the process by which uh, we could find the derivative of a composite function. Now for this problem, the first thing we need to do is rewrite it. So what we have is x plus parentheses x plus x to the half. x to the half is the square root of x. And then this is raised to the half. That's this square root symbol here. And then everything is raised to the half for the square root that encompasses everything. Now, the first thing we're going to use is the power rule on uh, this exponent here. So first, we're going to move the 1 half to the front. And then we're going to keep the inside part the same. So that's x plus x plus x to the half, raised to the half. And now we need to subtract this by 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Now the next thing that we need to do is find the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of x is going to be 1. And then the derivative of this expression, we need to move the 1 half to the front. So it's going to be 1 half times what we see on the inside. We're going to keep that part the same, and then subtract this by 1. 1 half minus 1, that's going to be negative a half. Now, we need to find the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of x to the half, we need to use the power rule again. So it's going to be 1 half x to the minus 1 half. So all of this represents the derivative of the inside function. So this is the answer. But what we need to do at this point is we need to clean it up a bit. So let's go ahead and do that. The negative 1 half tells us that we have a square root function, but underneath the fraction or on the denominator fraction. So we can rewrite this whole expression like this. So this one it remains on top of the fraction. The 2 is on the bottom. And all of this will be on the bottom due to the negative exponent. So that's going to be the square root of x plus the square root of x plus the square root of x. So this entire fraction is going to be multiplied by everything we see here. So all of this needs to go on the numerator of that fraction. But we're going to do this one step at a time. So we have 1 plus. Now we need a fraction for this. The 2 is going to be on the bottom. And then the negative 1 half tells us that this expression will be on the bottom but with a radical sign. So it's going to be the square root of x. And then plus x to the half is the square root of x. And then this term is multiplied by what we see here. So that's times 1 plus 1 half x to the negative 1 half. That's 1 over 2 square root x. And all of this is multiplied to that expression. So we can write the final answer like this. So on the bottom, we have 2 square root x plus the square root of x 
plus root x. On top, we're going to have 1 plus, and then we can combine those two things into a single fraction. So it's going to be 1 plus 1 over 2 square root x divided by 2 square root x plus square root x. So this right here is the final answer. So that is the derivative of this expression. I'm not going to simplify it any further than that. So that's it for this video. So now you know how to find the derivative of this function using a chain rule.